In this short video, we're going to show you the three most common ways to set up your well water chlorinator. And there are actually three different ways you can set it up so that it turns on and off automatically. And if you scroll down this page, you'll see some installation diagrams. And this, the, the, the common way right here is that the injection point where the chlorine gets injected into the pipe is before the pressure tank and then it's wired to turn on and off with the pressure switch. So whenever the well pump or if you're using a booster pump gets power and the water starts to flow then the chlorine pump will turn on and off at the same time. Now that does involve some wiring so uh, you might need an electrician to do it or um, you have to be familiar with the wiring and the voltage of your submersible pump. Most folks do have 220 volt submersible pumps, so therefore the common pump to get, the chlorine pump to get, is 220 volt. Now, there is a simpler way to do it, and that is to use a pre wired flow switch. The flow switch is installed uh, also at, before the pressure tank. So the idea is when the water is flowing, if with a standard submersible pump that say turns on at 30 psi off at 50 or on at 40 psi off at 60 whatever it's turning on at one lower pressure and off at a higher pressure so in effect the water when it's flowing here it's flowing more or less at the same speed so at the same flow rate so the the what the flow switch does is makes it very easy you just can plug it into any 110 volt outlet or you could use a 220 volt outlet if you're using a 220 volt pump but the idea is that say you have an outlet that's on all the time that's energized all the time and then whenever there's flow there's a a, a receptacle or outlet on the pre-wired flow switch where you plug your metering pump into this is more expensive because you have to buy the flow switch however it's very simple and it, any plumber could do it there's no wiring involved <clears throat> and the other point about it is is that if if you had ever had a situation where your well pump failed but your chlorine pump was still getting energy getting power it could pump an excess amount of chlorine into the pipe so this is sort of a fail safe way to do it where you're you're really only pumping the chlorine when there's flow having said that by far most of our customers over the years have used this option one, which does work very well as well. Okay, then the option three is, say you have a uh, on-demand or constant pressure pump, where it's, it's a variable speed motor on your submersible pump, and so it's maintaining a constant pressure in the home. Those are, it's kind of a deluxe way to go. Those are getting more popular. And what that means is that you're, you couldn't use there's no real pressure switch it's a, they use a pressure sensor and there's no way to really wire your medium pump to turn on and off for that so with that the simple way to deal with it is to use a flow sensor and what's called proportional feed we have all these we have the flow switch and the proportional feed and it's very easy to set up in some ways this is the easiest one to set up and so again you're just um, putting your this thing looks like a water meter has a cable coming out of it and then you just plug your your metering pump into a wall so it's it's plugged in all the time and whenever there's flow it allows the, the chlorine pump to pump more or less depending on how fast the water is flowing so those are the three main ways to do it and you can see those up here if you go to the go to the top under this optional flow switch you can choose a flow switch and if you want a proportional system there over here on the left under proportional flow chlorinators you just click there and then those have three different sizes they have the three quarter inch the one inch or the inch and a half so basically for those you're you have to know what pipe size or decide on the pipe size you want most folks get the one inch so there you have it. Hope that was helpful.